Well, hey there. Welcome back to just west of Paradise Garden. We have been on a unfortunate bit of a break here because we have had five days of rain. And when it was not raining, the wind was blowing. So we're back. A little bit of a quiet interval here. And I thought I would talk with you about something that's on a lot of gardeners' minds this time of year. And it is our good friend, yellow jacket wasp. Vespula alicensis in North America. A lot of people are afraid of them and, and they can be fierce when they feel threatened, but they're a tremendous asset in a garden and in a food forest setting because they eat a lot of undesirable insects. So if you like cabbage, but you hate cabbage worms, these are your friends. You need to have some respect when you're around them. You see right next to this nest is a chicory plant. that I haven't touched since the very beginning of July because this family has uh, camped right out next to it. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing because bumblebees and sweat bees and mason bees, everybody's been coming to get the pollen out of the chicory flower. So we're gonna have a lot of seeds and we're gonna have a lot of chicory next year. blowing them at me here. Okay. So they're very busy in the fall for a number of reasons. Number one, underneath the ground, their nest right now is the size of at least a basketball. Very big, thousands of grubs to feed. And their queen, where we are, she is on her expiration notice she will freeze to death with everybody else when the temperatures get get too low so they get a little agitated much more easily in the fall but if you are able to give them a good margin they are going to do you a lot of favors getting rid of bugs that you don't want around. Flies, they'll eat anything that is soft and squishy and that will be eating your plants and your fruit. Sometimes people see weird little swarms of them in the tops of trees in the fall and usually what that is is a mating cluster, a new queen has hatched and a bunch of males that have been staking her out come to take their chance. They're not generally interested in being aggressive, but they can be, so still I would not get too, too close to a, a group of insects that are up above it on top of a tree when there's a nest nearby. So, you know, if you have young children who aren't going to understand to stay out of their way, or you have pets that are very nosy, probably not your best bet, but if you can give them space, they're very good friends to gardeners. If you don't want them around, you want to discourage them, then do not compost large bits of stick in a pile. This is a pretty ideal situation for a queen to say, hey, I'll spend the winter here and make a nest. Keep, keep your compost 
chip down very small. And use your mulch as soon as you get it. And I have about another month to go for these guys before the weather gets too cold for them to survive. And at that point, I'm going to be putting a little red low ornamental crab apple in there, but right now we're not going to do that. But we've got plenty of other things going on in the garden this time of year, even though we've only been here, this is the end of our second year. My next task coming up is going to be to get thin these crab apples. They're not quite ready. The seeds are still a little pale yesterday when I checked. But we'll, we'll show you how that works out when we get to it. The tree is completely overloaded with really big apples this year as far as ornamental crab apples go. Last year they were really tiny but it was too dry in July. This year we had a lot of rain in July and they've really come on great. So we've got New updates coming up as soon as this weather clears over. We'll get into some other, other projects and I will talk with you then. Take care.